and welcome to Bloomberg Fin. Bajaj FinServe saw its top line rise by more than 40%, but profit registered only a marginal uptick. That's because the company had to provide for its exposure to Island Nephis. Joining us now on the phone line uh, from Pune to talk about the numbers in greater detail is the company's CFO, S. Srinivasan. Sir, hi. So could you talk us through the basic highlights of the numbers? So we did see the Bajaj Finance numbers yesterday and uh, uh, Mr. Rajiv Jain, he did guide for about 25 to 20% AU and growth uh, going forward. Other than that, the insurance businesses saw some muted trends this time around. Could you help us understand a bit further? Yes. Let me start with the general insurance business. I think general insurance business, the growth was very strong. Uh, the grew, premium grew by 17%. Uh, the industry growth was just 11.5%. Uh, and we have been growing very strongly in areas like fire, liability, and retail health, where the fire actually grew by 58%. Uh, even overall motor premiums growth was reasonably strong at 13.5%, which is very good considering the low volume of auto sales. Uh, but as part of the uh, company's plan to optimize profitability, we did uh, grow less in certain areas like group health where the loss ratios were high. However, the profitability side, uh, we had a uh, couple of uh, results which we hope are one-offs. Firstly, we had some uh, losses from the last year's rubby season in crop which resulted in an increase in underwriting losses of about 98 crores compared to the last year first quarter. So we didn't have that loss in the last year. Uh, similarly, the cyclone funny, which happened in the first quarter, we had a net exposure of 30 crores. Uh, and But there are some slight increases in certain retail loss ratios like motor OD, but over the next nine months, we hope that will get corrected. So in the general insurance business, when you have such large losses impacting one quarter, it tends to get magnified because these are not expected to happen every quarter. So we have, uh, otherwise the business is on a strong wicket. Uh, we have a very strong bank assurance uh, distribution with practically every major bank in India tied up with us. In terms of life insurance, the business was excellent. 17% uh, growth in individual rated premium, 41% in total new business, 29% in renewal. Uh, even the product mix, which two years ago we changed, uh, because our exposure to ULIP we felt was very high at about 78%. Now it's 61% ULIP and 39% traditional. And this has helped us grow our margins, control our overruns. And our persistency is also moving up. In all the buckets, uh, it has moved up. 39th is above, 13th month is about 79%. And it's our target to take it well above 80%, hopefully by end of the year. So overall, uh, I think uh, the insurance businesses, but for the one-off where we had to provide for the DHFL uh, provision, which again is a, uh, by way of abundant caution, because there's a lot of news flow happening every day in the press and the other media, but we thought we will not wait for things to happen, and we did make the provision, because one of the commercial papers on the last uh, week of June, they defaulted, and since we went into default grade, we did that as part of our impairment policy. So we have so far provided 60% of our exposure. Okay. Sir, um, since you talked about general insurance uh, first, going by the trends in the economy, we are witnessing slowdown in several segments um, such as auto uh, and, you know, FMCG, etc. So how do you see the impact of that uh, falling on general insurance? Do you see, we've already seen for most of the company, the motor insurance premiums falling down. Uh, yes. So what are your thoughts on the same? See, as far as motor is 40% uh, of the total market, uh, and therefore, when new car sales slow down, there will be an impact on uh, the motor insurance premium. Although there is a large pool of cars which are more than not new cars, which are also available for insurance, because being an asset which depreciates, the premium for the older cars is much lower. Having said that, the general insurance is a multi-product, multi-channel business. So we are seeing strong demand for health insurance. Uh, because of uh, certain changes in the reinsurance uh, arrangement this year, we are seeing strong uh, pricing in the fire and uh, uh, large corporate insurance uh, premiums. Uh, that for several years had been on a, a degrowing trend, but now the prices seem to have stabilized and started moving up a little bit. So that is showing excellent growth. So historically, if you see, even when the economy has been uh, growth has been the macro growth has been very low. General insurance business normally has delivered about 9-10% uh, growth, and in good times it delivers maybe 18-20% growth. 
So this business is not just about asset insurances. Today, almost a third of the business is not from assets, but from health insurance and liability insurances. And uh, most of the SMEs, uh, uh, companies, car owners, they do tend to keep their uh, assets insured anyway. So we are quite optimistic of general insurance. Yes, there could be some uh, effect on motor insurance, but we are overall optimistic. So, sir, within the general insurance segment, what would be your focus areas going ahead? Uh, I understand that most of the companies are focusing big on health. We also saw HDFC or Go Deal happening with Apollo Munich. So, do you have any such plans? Uh, no, we don't have any inorganic plans as of now. However, we have a very strong health insurance portfolio. Uh, <clears throat> last year, we did almost 1,700 crores of health business. Uh, our health uh, administration, our tie-ups with hospitals, I think it is a, uh, a property we have built over a number of years. Um, therefore, we are very optimistic on health, uh, uh, and we have a large number of bank assurance tie-ups also, many of which can sell health insurance. So in terms of distribution, in terms of capability, in terms of uh, customer service, uh, we are well equipped to deal with that. Okay, sir, in the life insurance business uh, for uh, players across the industry, we are seeing strong traction in the protection business. So are you also aligned towards that and how are you, uh, you know, changing your product mix uh, to address this demand basically? See, the product mix we addressed in two stages. Uh, about two years ago, we decided to move on the savings products away from ULIP. Uh, now we have brought down the ULIP to 60%, which is market-linked business, so it's very volatile, the ULIP business. And about 40% is traditional, and we have been able to grow that book quite well. Uh, we have best-in-class uh, products. We did launch, relaunch uh, our uh, products with the uh, return of mortality charges on the unit link, which was an industry first. Um, on the protection side, as of now, we do uh, quite a bit of uh, group protection. Uh, we have been uh, leaders in that business for a number of years. Uh, however, going forward, we have just uh, awaiting IRD approval on uh, a best-in-class uh, term assurance product. So it will be our endeavor to also increase the share of uh, retail uh, term life along with this. So over the next two to three years, we think we should see some traction on that side as well. Uh, sir, you uh, mentioned in uh, the first answer that you did provide for the exposure to Devan housing. You've done 60% provisioning with yes. regards to that as a prudent measure. Right. Sir, considering uh, the rate of defaults that we've been seeing in last couple of months, in case there are you know many more such defaults that happen in the next few months, is that going to have a huge impact on the uh, bond exposures that you have to some of these companies? Not really, because in the insurance sector, 15% of your assets for both life and non-life companies have to be invested in housing and infrastructure as per the regulatory norms. So therefore, in that sector, we have always stuck to uh, rating uh, which was AA and above. In hindsight, it turns out that two of the companies, ILFS and Devon, which were both AAA rated, have actually defaulted. Therefore, uh, we have now strengthened our internal process, in the process of strengthening our internal teams to do our own credit rating going forward. Uh, we are watching each of the names we have invested in. As of now, we don't have anything which is rated below AA by the credit, rate, credit rating agencies. Uh, but we have a few names which we are tracking because there are a lot of market news about them, but nothing confirmed. They are still continuing to pay and honor their obligations. So there's no reason for us to actually consider them as default. So just one last word on Bajaj Finance, uh, even though Mr. Jain did speak about it in detail, but what are your thoughts on the slowdown in the economy, the kind of impact that it's going to have on the consumer spending? See, I will divide that into two parts. One is, yes, we have seen auto sales, two-wheeler sales uh, not uh, growing well enough for the last several months. Uh, consumer discretionary spending has not been that great for the last maybe two, three quarters. Uh, the other side is the, the demand for loans. I don't think there is any uh, shortage of demand for loans uh, because of structural issues, capacity is restricted in NBFCs, in banks, the ability to lend has been restricted because of the problems of NPAs and the problems faced uh, in raising money. Uh, therefore, it is a capacity issue. 
uh, within the NBFC sector, we are, uh, you know, uh, in terms of management, in terms of ability to attract funds, we still remain one of the most preferred names for investors. So it is not our intention to slow down growth. However, in a situation like this, where the cash flows in the economy tend to get muted, it is natural for a company like us, it is not the first time we are doing it, every time, every <coughs> month we track this very carefully. We do make a lot of small tweaks in our underwriting uh, guidelines in terms of who we want to give money to. Uh, it may, uh, may that a smaller proportion at the bottom of our credit profile <clears throat> may get knocked out. But there is enough opportunity. We are still a very small proportion of the banking system. 65% of our business is from existing customers. Uh, we have a wide variety of offerings. It is not just uh, consumer durables anymore. We do lifestyle, we do digital, we do home loans, uh, we do retail EMI through uh, multi-format uh, stores like Big Bazaar. Uh, we are doing uh, healthcare uh, expenses uh, on 0% finance. So it's a for the same group of customers, we are able to offer a wide variety of purposes for which they can use this limit for. So we are optimistic. Uh, we think at this stage, risk is uh, uh, what we should concentrate on. And we will be making all these tweaks on various segments of our business. Whether that will pan out into lower growth, we'll have to wait and see. But because we are a diversified company, we are very optimistic. Both geographically as well as by product, we are well diversified. Mr. Srinivasan, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Thanks thank a you lot. for watching. Thanks.